In this video, let's talk about an important discussion. Which framework is the best? Is it React? Is it Swift? Is it Vue? Is it Angular? Is it Quick? Is it SolidJS? What is happening in today's time? As a beginner, it might be overwhelming to you to understand all of these frameworks. So I just want to give my two cents in this complete video on why this choice actually fundamentally doesn't really matter and what you should do about it. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. So let's go back to the very beginning, right? Let's start from someone who is trying to learn web development. Now, if you think about picking these frameworks often a lot of people fight over react has this thing swelt has this thing angular has this thing and so on but the reason you as an individual or you as a part of a team or you as a huge organization will choose a framework is because you want to build something right unless you are building react documentation itself it doesn't matter like fundamentally what framework or what thing you build because the people who will experience your app they would not know fundamentally what is it built with right most people in most consumer apps which they use they don't even know about programming languages like html or css or javascript if you have a SaaS product or if you have something which is like a social media website or something where your audience is non-technical chances are they would never really even care what you are using it might as well be just magic under the hood and they would not care what technologies you are using so very fundamentally speaking these things are tools to accomplish something else right when you pick up a framework you should pick it up but your underlying thing should be that is this the right tool which solves a particular problem now let's let's discuss a little bit about what right tool also means right tool in some context means the technology itself for example if you are a react developer or if you are a swelt developer swelt is a right tool for you why because it might be very speedy for you to ship that product right so this is where i feel right tool can be the first thing is that right tool is right for you that is also important because if a tool helps you speed up certain things as a developer that is right if it helps you ship an application in two weeks instead of four months of learning that is right if you are a swell developer for example or if you are a solid js developer or anyone and we two are competing it is a right tool for you Swelt or solid or any other tech for example it's not a right tool for me because i'm a react developer i would probably create that app in a week or in a few days with react but with any other technology i might have to learn that it's not a right tool for me specifically so when you pick up a technology you also have to make Make sure that it is right for you the second type of right is the tech itself right in general so picking up for example node.js for a very heavily compute optimized app is not a right choice right i mean if you are let's say processing something which is a lot of i don't know like if you're bank or something who is processing a lot of transactions per second or something like that then you need a language which can hold that or you know which is cpu performant or if you are running a lot of processes or if you're running a lot of compute then you might require some additional things right of course like cc plus plus might not also be a good language out there whatever is the language whether that's rust whether that's go that also depends on what your use case is so sometimes it happens that your constraints also define the right tool most in most cases as an individual you will never have these constraints you will never have to focus initially on performance you will never have to focus initially on you know what if a million requests comes my way will this tech stack will be able to handle it chances are you are never gonna get a million requests or you know so much load on your tech stack that you have to worry about that and if you reach a point then this would actually be less of a worry for you why because you're probably operating as a business you're probably operating as a person even you who can afford to hire good developers right who can then rewrite the systems so the important thing here is to realize that sometimes yes the technology should also be right according to what the constraints are but that thing is rare in nature what is more common is what is the right tool for you okay so what if you're a beginner what if you're someone who has little experience in a few technologies or maybe no experience at all then for you what i feel is a right move is where the community is so the first thing you have to realize as a beginner is, I mean, of course, it, it is like a little controversial opinion, but I feel it is good to follow the crowd, follow people 
who already have suffered a lot in that space. For example, in case of web development, JavaScript, React, these technologies are there. I mean, React is there for almost a decade now. So a lot of problems you'll face, a lot of errors you'll face, a lot of things you'll face, they're already asked somewhere out there. So you will have a lot of support. You will have a lot of packages. You will have a lot of community help available to you. Once you are good with that, once let's say you're good with React, which is like the most popular uh, one of the most popular UI libraries out there. Once you understand the overall way how frameworks work or how React works, then you can maybe make some smarter choices to shift to another framework where you understand what the cons of React are or what other framework offers which React doesn't. Just giving you an example. But the thing is, initially, if you're a beginner, this is strictly for beginners, if you go and pick up something which is, you know, extremely hot or extremely new tech. Chances are it shines on the front, but there are always ugly parts to something which is very new and shiny. They would, there would be undocumented bugs, you know, unexpected features, especially if it's not stable, it's in, still in beta and so on. It's gonna be a hard journey for you, right? So as a beginner, as someone who's trying to get into a new framework, first thing you have to realize is the frameworks don't really matter as much. What matters is what you are building with it. But if you have to make a choice, then I would recommend going with a framework which is relatively old and stable because boring and old tech usually are better technologies. And this is like a general statement, not just focused to web. In general, also, if you take a look at languages and technologies, things which are, you know, boring, for example, Java or even C, C++ or even Rust, which are there for a while, they tend to be more mature. They tend to have a lot more community or a lot more errors documented and a lot more edge cases being discovered already. So what you want to do as a beginner is focus more on technologies which are stable, technologies which are existing for some time, learn them, get to an intermediate level, and then you can explore anything and everything you want. That I feel should be what you should do as a developer. But I'm interested to know what your thoughts are on choosing a framework or, you know, in this today's time, even if we talk about web development, super saturated with new frameworks coming out every week almost. That's what it feels like. But what do you think about this? Let me know in the comments below. That is all for this video. I'm gonna see you in the next one really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of CodeDamp's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and thank you so much for watching.